Hello everybody. How are y'all doing? I don't want to spend too much time on this intro. I'm doing fairly well. I hope you guys are all doing really well as well. That was a lot of wells. This is the candidates panel for the King's Hands candidates in the upcoming federal election. I just got a couple interviews and I recorded the entire panel, which I'll be uploading in chunks. I'm not sure what you'd like to see first. I'll upload a few chunks of the panel discussion and I'll also upload an interview or two. Let me know in the comments what you like more. I'll try and post that stuff more immediately and trickle everything else out as it comes. But yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I'm not going to do this for every clip, so you'll see this behind the opening statements of the candidates and then I'll just make it an issue by issue thing and let the candidates run through it. So thanks for everybody who came out, thanks for everybody who's watching at home, and thanks for all the candidates who came out and did their thing. All shut up now, thanks for tuning in. Candidate form for the federal election. I'm Stacey Ingram, Vice President of the Hanson District Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of myself, our organization, and the weekly press, we want to welcome you to hear our local candidates tonight. Tonight we're uh, fortunate to have five candidates on the stage. We have Martha McCory from the Conservatives, Cody Boyce from the Liberals, Brogan Anderson representing the Green Party, Stephen Schneider from the NDP, and Matthew Sokol with the People's Party of Canada. All candidates have participated in a random draw for order and will keep that order all evening. We will start with opening statements from each before moving into the question round. All questions were canvassed from readers of the weekly press and members of the East Hans and District Chamber of Commerce. Each candidate will have one minute to answer the question. We ask you, the audience, once again to be respectful and remain quiet to allow all candidates to speak. Please enjoy the evening, and we will now begin with opening statements. But before that, if I could give you one more housekeeping reminder, if anyone could turn off their cell phone or turn the windows off, that would be great. So, you ready, Abby? I'm ready. <laughs> so, we'll first uh, hear opening remarks from Brogan Anderson. Good evening. My name is Brogan Anderson. I'm running for the Green Party. I grew up outside Quebec City, fully bilingual. J'ai hâte au débat en français, but I actually don't think there's going to be a French debate. Um, my dad grew up in Prince Edward Island, seventh generation farming family, and my mom emigrated with her family from England uh, to Ontario, and they moved to Quebec for my dad's work, and that's where I grew up. I then uh, moved to Ottawa, I did a BA in linguistics, and I became involved with the environment group there. And there were a number of issues that were of interest to us at the time. Um, there was a plan for deep storage of nuclear waste and genetically modified foods were just coming on stream and there were questions about why are these things being approved and not being labeled and so there was some activism around that and as a young person I really wanted to get my hands in the ground and do something about these issues and I went out west to work on organic farms and that's in fact why I came to Nova Scotia as well initially working on organic farms and learning about an alternative agriculture. And then I got a job at the Wolf Hill Library, where I've now been for 20 years. Met my partner, started a family. We have two children, they're 16 and 9. And I continue to be involved in various ways in the Sierra Club and the Council of Canadians. But, you know, I was busy with my life and I was thinking, well, somebody else is looking after the really important issues and I'm doing my best and living my little life. And, and then over the past year, um, I became increasingly concerned with the way that our world is going and increasingly concerned with the government in action, specifically on the issue of climate change. And I felt that it was time for an ordinary person to stand up and say, I want to stand and hear my point of view articulated on this stage. Um, we are facing unprecedented situations in the world and we need to take action and I came forward for that sole purpose. Thank you, Robert. Hello, I am Matthew 
country so from and the people's party came that became stands but before i tell you about myself i want to tell you a little bit about the people's party because most of you might not know about this for example you might not know that we are the fastest growing party in the history of canada you might not know that we have more members than the green party of canada who started in 1980 whereas we started a year ago you might not know that we do not have a party wing but instead have a free vote within our party the way it should be in a democracy we are a phenomenon a miracle but still, you might ask, well, why have I not heard of you? You see, in fact, this is a case of media bias. We are the only party to stay here against political correctness, and we are the only party willing to tell the truth, even if it makes things and people uncomfortable. And it's not something that the media and politicians like. When it comes to telling the truth, if they believe it will offend a special interest group, they simply won't do it. But that has got to stop. We need to be able to hit problems on the head by talking about them and being as informed as possible. And that's what I hope to do here tonight. On that note, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in uh, Kent, out here, just across from the NSCC. I went to Memorial University, where I studied geography and business to achieve a regional development certificate. And I was working as a summer student with a telecommunications company throughout my time in university. <coughs> After three years of schooling, I decided to enter the world of full-time employment. And I've been working in the field for the past nine years, and it's been a wonderful time. I've taken on several roles within my career to help my peers and colleagues, such as being a shop steward, a unit chair, occupational health and safety chair, as well as unit uh, chair and safety chair. My hobby is stand up comedy, and my vocation has been advocating for freedom of mental health. My mission is to bring unity, conversation, and respect to an ever divided population. We need to get involved in making this country better, and that's why I got involved with the grassroots political party that wants to be a voice for the people and not the elites. So listen, and if you hear something you like today, please consider voting for the People's Party of Canada and becoming a member. Thank you. We don't have a lot of room up here, we've got to get cozy. Good evening everyone and thank you for being here this evening. I consider it a privilege to be the Conservative candidate for King's Hands. I am the youngest of three, the adopted daughter of Malcolm and Charlotte McCorry. My mother is here in the crowd tonight, thanks mom for being here. Um, in my adult life, I went on search and found my birth mother and realized that she was 14 years old when she found herself pregnant due to a date rape. <coughs> I live every day grateful for the selfless gift of love my birth mother provided me, giving me a chance at life she knew would not be able to, she would not be able to provide. They do not take that gift lightly. My father was a second generation small business owner. He taught me that success isn't something dropped in one's lap. It is earned through hard work coupled with tree, treating all people fairly and with respect. It is his example, coupled with my own life experiences, that motivates me to do all I can to fulfill my duty as a citizen of this wonderful community and this country. So far, I've knocked on over 16,000 doors. The stories I hear from our neighbors have a common theme. In the past four years, taxes have increased, causing everyday essentials to cost more, leaving fewer dollars in our pockets at the end of the day. I believe there needs to be more check at the end of the month and not more month at the end of the check. I would be honored to be your voice in Ottawa and promise to do my best to keep your trust. Thank you. Thanks everyone for uh, allowing us to speak to you tonight. First of all, apologies to those who showed up expecting to play bingo. Um, <laughs> my name is Steve Schneider, I'm with ENDP. I live in Wolfville with my wife and my nine-year-old, and I'm a professor at St. Mary's University. In fact, if you want to make me feel at home, everyone get out your cell phones and start texting while I'm talking. <laughs> um, I love coming to these, these debates, these forums on local issues and how we can connect them to national and federal government. Um, East Hans is a, a, a splendid, 
community that has both great attributes and challenges like the rest of Nova Scotia. I mean, we are all amazed by the natural beauty, of course, the highest highs in the world, and Birkhead Park, uh, the economy, with ties to the airport, business parks, and tourism, a growing population, and certainly one of the younger populations in the province, and very well educated and highly productive and skilled workforce as well. Uh, we also know that there's been a, a high rate of residential development and commercial infrastructure in, the late, in recent years, including expansion of the Elmsdale Business Park and the new ramp and connector. And of course, home making new work, um, First Nation, and your fabulous East Hans Aquatic Center, which my nine year old daughter absolutely loves. But of course, with every community, there's challenges. Uh, with your growth and development, we know there is a lack of affordable housing for seniors and for um, low income. And this, of course, is an issue uh, that we share in, in Annapolis Valley where I live. Um, poverty continues to be unacceptably high in this community and throughout the province. Um, we know, of course, that Camden saying that high speed internet is still a challenge to many of you. Um, traffic congestion, a commiserate being in Wolfville, um, and also, of course, the broader issue of climate change, healthcare, um, erosion along the, the uh, Shubenacki River, of course. And also just fostering a sense of community. A lot of individuals I've talked to as well have loved this place, love the community, but are also looking for um, the kind of social cohesion they may find in smaller towns as well. But anyways, thanks for having me, and thanks for uh, hosting this debate at this forum, and uh, look forward to speaking with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cody Blois. I'm the Liberal candidate, and I want to start by thanking you all for being here, taking an interest in our community and ultimately our democracy. Many of you in this room would know my background. I'm from a working class family. My father was a truck driver, my mother an administrative assistant at the local school. I'm a former athlete and have been heavily involved in this community as a volunteer, and that's why I put my name forward. I'm passionate about the work that I've done in the community and I see elected office as a way to work on things that matter to people and communities every day. It needs to be said that this election is truly a referendum on where we want to go as a country on many important issues. Whether we choose forward on the progress we've made, such as continuing the important work to address climate change and protect our environment, supporting our middle class families, those working to join it and growing our economy, building the infrastructure needed to support a brighter future for generations to come, working towards reconciliation with Indigenous people, or supporting people in communities that need the help the most. We need to continue that progress we have made in the past four years, not only across the country, but also continue the important work to make King's Hands an even better place to live. We cannot take a step backwards and return to the Harbour era style politics where the age of retirement was raised to 67, where science was ignored for the sake of political ideology, a world where environment took a back seat, and where middle and low income families struggled to get ahead while we see tax breaks for those that are the most wealthy. I'm excited tonight to exchange ideas and debate the policies that will help all of us move forward in a positive way. Thank you. Thank you. 